Gracias. Hey, race fans, head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, an amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. I didn't want to get just any degree after high school. Horse racing has always been my passion. I was already a lawyer. When I was young, my dad took me to the races. The sound of the crowd, I still remember. I'm 40, and I don't want to stay in a career I don't love. I want to follow my passion. Follow your passion at the University of Arizona Racetrack Industry Program. We're back on Loose on the Lead on this fun and frenetic Sunday morning, our last of the broadcast season from Saratoga. And, of course, the last opportunity for three-year-old Phillies came yesterday in the prior S, and the opportunity capitalized upon by Kelly Breen and Stoneway Farms and Stone Tastic, who was fantastic under Paco Lopez. A great ride by Paco. It was a great day for him, a great day for you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Kelly, this was an interesting group of fillies because when you looked at the race from a handicapping standpoint, there was nobody that is necessarily a, a have the lead type, a bunch of fillies that wants to be near the lead. Mm -hmm. Your filly has done a lot of different things, now officially shortening back up as a sprinting filly. You took over, Paco said go, and this thing was over in the first hundred yards. You know, I, I think that's a little bit of Paco style, and it was the, the racetrack style also yesterday. And uh, you know, we came up with a game plan at the beginning of the year not to try her over a mile. We're going to see what we can do, where we can run. And uh, right now it paid off. Pays off handsomely here. And as this was unfolding, I mean, when you see her running away uh, under, <laughs> under hand conditions. You know, the, in her first race as a two-year-old, she did a, a similar thing. She ran the similar way. She was in front until about the quarter pole, and then from the quarter pole to the wire, she accelerated. And it doesn't always happen like that. Uh, so part of saying, let's not try and get her to go the distance, she ran second to untappable in her second start. Uh, really liked her, but she didn't have that kick like she does sprinting. And you know, we tried her on the grass. We tried a little bit of everything to see what she actually liked, and I think that Staying under the mile, if that's the way to go, that's uh, where we're going to make a whole bunch of money. Do you have anything in mind for next? I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to the owners, Jim Stone and uh, Terry, to find out what we're going to do. I know their thoughts right away with the Breeders' Cup, and she ran a big buyer number. She ran 108 buyer. Does that you know, promote the big bounce theory as to what's going to happen next? Do we run at Keeneland, um, or do we just go into the Breeders' Cup and give her a little bit of break because she's... She's good off the layoff also. So. Well, and you're a guy that's, uh, that's a third graph and cheat uh, philosophy in terms of understanding the impact of a performance like this, even though it did come uh, you know, without any pressure and she did it on her own. One thing I got to ask about, Monmouth, uh, in terms of training conditions, has been during the, afternoon, during the mornings very heavy and very deep. And so these sharp times have been coming over what has been a very slow morning racetrack at Monmouth, which only really further yeah. impresses. So Sometimes the fast horses, or the good horses, make the track fast. And she was a fast horse, and going back to what her races were, we kept on trying to have to slow her down. And Bob Neumeyer just said I, we had a workout where Paco breezes her, and she goes from 33 and changes to first three eighths, and then he's got to just take it easy with her. And it's published out that she worked in 59 and change, something to that effect, uh, or a minute out the gate. And, but Paco, what are you doing? You know, and he says, it's just her. I could have went faster. I said, no, you, we didn't want you to go faster. We, Paco, you got to slow her down. We're trying to rate her a little bit. Uh, no, but she's a fast filly, and, and I've been around a, a plenty of fast colts when I worked for Ben Perkins Sr. That seems like forever now that uh, we had uh, Forest Wildcat and Confide and uh, Meridia Kratt was our first horse that I was around that went to the Breeders' Cup. And you work around fast horses, and they do it easy. When they do it that easy and they do it that fast, they're nice horses. 
a nice day and as you're as we're talking and you make me think of Monmouth I realized too of course between Paco and you and Eddie Plisa uh, this was a spectacular day for yeah, Jersey we, based we, horsemen. We did pretty good for uh, for Monmouth guys coming and stealing the money and getting exactly. back in the car and heading back to Jersey. Well, she, to me, was the most interesting and most versatile type going into this race. And uh, Paco Lopez, who we talked earlier, Seth and I opened the show. Uh, I mean, to me, he is now knocking on the door, and it's not just going to be Gulfstream and back to Mammoth. He is going to have to start thinking seriously about the move to New York. Uh, it's going to How is it not going to be possible for Lopez to take the next step? You know, he does well at, at a at Gulfstream, um, but he loves Monmouth Park. You know, it, it's the hustle and the bustle of the of the city keeps him away. And he loves Monmouth Park. He bought a house down there. Uh, his family's there. And he's probably maybe a, a, a good driver four iron from uh, from the beach. So Interesting. It's, he, he really enjoys it. There, there is a nice community that's there, yeah. a Latin community that he can go out to eat, and he's a regular person. He's just, he goes out to eat at the regular places with the regular guys. That's interesting. It makes, it makes me almost feel like a, a kind of a Ramon Dominguez uh, tie-in, well, right? And, yeah. and, and basically Bates staying, right? California. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and staying close to home, and, and that's interesting. Tony Black in Philadelphia, yes. maybe confining the career to, uh, you know, to the, that social. But, I mean, Lopez obviously at this point can show up at any oval on a big Saturday mm -hmm. and is deserving of the top mounts mm -hmm. and, and those kinds of considerations, unless you guys want to keep him to yourself, you <laughs> and Lisa and, and Kathleen O'Connell and whoever else wants to use him. You, you know, he's a, he's a, horses run for him. You know, when, when you have a jockey that at times he's in his own, I think he's 50 or something in front at Monmouth Park. Yeah. It's that's crazy. a lot. It's crazy. That's a lot. And uh, he's there in the morning, the work horses, and he really enjoys it. He loves it. You know, one thing, too, I want to ask about for you, because this, uh, having a horse like this, having the, uh, the Stones send you Stone-tastic, uh, the Mizzen Mass filly, it's a bit of a, of a story in itself because, of course, you were confined uh, uh, quite happily to George and Laurie Hall as, as a house uh, trainer. And then they kind of opened things up for you as they, ret not retracted, but they... They're gotten smaller. Smaller, and that gave you an opportunity to take on new clients. It, it, the small world full circle of this was that I purchased a horse for them, for the Halls, off of... The Stones. Oh, how funny! And I really liked the Colton, and his career was shortened because he had gotten hurt. But he was a Forest Wildcat horse that had my ties back to, to Ben to Ben Perkins. <laughs> uh, he reminded me of Forest Wildcat. Uh, he was awfully fast, and he got hurt at an, at an early age. But he was, uh, I think, he won a couple stake races. And next thing I know, they have the horses at the same farm where my horses are being broke. And then we, we sort of, you know, everything sort of meshed. Well, uh, the result, uh, and in fact, there's a lot of things meshing here because, of course, uh, the Brogdons uh, have had a remarkable year with all Brogdon, kinds of yeah. graded stake horses, and here's now another one and a filly uh, at that. We mentioned the halls. we got to wrap it up, but I want to ask about Bye Bye Bernie today in the turf sprint. Well, I'm trying to keep the rain away. You are. If, uh, You're good. Yeah, You're it's good. on its way. Is I, it? I, so if it's just going to be a light rain, uh, he had a really tremendous stride. I watched the replay in, in slow motion, and he just got beat, finished third, a neck and a nose. But his stride in slow motion, he really looked like he was, he was trying. He was getting it. He, his, his toes, when he was pushing off, were down, and he was reaching for it uh, with his front legs. So I, I think I have him back at where he was last year before he had gotten hurt. And, uh, you know, the race could set up for him, five and a half furlongs. Mm -hmm. There's some speed in the race, outside post. Uh, maybe we're missing Paco Lopez today, but he's back in Jersey. You got Rajiv. Rajiv's right, aggressive. Rajiv does, does a great job, Won some, you know, nice races with him. And as long as it stays on the grass, I think he'll, he'll be running. And I, I don't know if he's 10 to 1 in the pro or something, 12 to 1. It, yeah. You know, I, I don't mind uh, lighting up the tote board. But I, I, I'll have to say a couple things sure. real quick Go about... On. Tom Durkin, yeah. and I don't know when he said that there's a shocker in the Belmont when we won the Belmont Stakes. 
that's my number one. Uh, you know, yeah, so absolutely. everybody has absolutely. their number one. You know, I did, you know, yesterday's call yeah. at Stone Tastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was Stone Cold Fantastic. That's that's pretty cool too. Yeah. But winning the Belmont and, and saying it's a shocker in the Belmont, uh, I can close my eyes and hear him say that at any time in my life. And you'll always have that, and that's yeah, one. Yeah, of, that's yeah. uh, a, a, a person, not just a great career highlight of Durkin's, but uh, when it's a person, and that's that's what Durkin, that's what Durkin's presence does. Okay, right. Kelly, that's thank awesome. you so right. much. Absolutely, congratulations on the win yesterday. Good luck on four. It's okay. fantastic, Kelly got it. Green.